Welcome to Happiness in the City. This is Barbara and today I would like to focus our attention on a very important terminology connected with the word prestige. When you look around today's conversations there is a very strange phenomenon in which people um, want to destroy anything that is of fame or prestige or uh, beauty. There is a certain sense of attack to destroy and uh, receive a certain sense of satisfaction from that punishment. So the attitude is punishing attitude for anything good and the standards for punishment are very um, strange. Some people call them weird and there is no sense of stability in perceptions of what should be praised and uh, the reasons for that kind of praise. So in order for us to have miraculous transformation in the tone on social media and other forms of media, we have to come back to the standards of beautiful perception and perception of prestige. Um, let's look at the definition. Some of you know that I am a professional linguist, so definitions are very important for me. And you see here prestige. Uh, it is widespread respect and admiration felt for someone or something on the basis of a perception of the achievement, uh, achievements or quality. So right here we have um, the uh, general definition that connects prestige, the word prestige, with the word respect and admiration. So the word respect and prestige are connected and admiration and prestige are connected. I'm lucky because I graduated from a very prestigious university in the United States, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Prior to this, I graduated from a university that was created by Tsar Alexander I University of Warsaw with the light of royal prestige. So uh, I felt it in those times when I was a student at the University of Warsaw. I felt that beauty has been passed on from generation to generation and is a very powerful light. And when I was studying there, I realized I entered corridors of heritage of prestige. In other words, it was a place where officially the royal heritage of this place was not recognized and yet the prestige of the heritage and the manner of founding of this university was felt powerfully and I connected with this with amazing results. Uh, the reason the Russian Tsars got involved in educational promotion of um, widespread access to learning was because of Tsarina Catherine II who loved philosophy um, she uh, befriended Voltaire, many other philosophers in the late 18th century France. She loved learning. She had this beautiful mind that not only loved learning, but loved sharing 
of high level learning with everybody who would uh, want to develop their mind. That uh, idea today um, is applied on the internet because internet is a place that has access to uh, education and allows that access to anybody on earth. And the, the word prestige, respect and admiration are connected in the way that university was created. People admired beauty of royalty, uh, people admired the purposes of um, royal light and that created that heritage of admiration. When we lose a sense of admiration and respect to anything around us that is prestigious, that has value of prestige, that is much higher than anything that can be measured, then we end up in a very dull environment, very boring, dull environment. And the situation today in social media means that we have to develop promotion of perceptions that would allow reconnection with that sense of um, respect and admiration to what is beautiful, to what is uh, prestigious, to what has lasting value, or who is being created because of somebody's great talent and ability to express that talent in amazing ways. So, in order to develop that sense of respect, we have to first look at each other in ways that is not punishing or banning or critical or heartbreaking, but instead we should look at each other in ways that connect our perception with the other person's perception through respect. Admiration is a higher level connection to prestige, but respect can be just a way to connect peacefully and um, and um, nobly with another person expecting that something admirable will develop. It's a certain attitude that uh, medieval times understood and coded as chivalric code, but that code is a very ancient. Uh, God revealed it to Israel, ancient Israel had that um, perception that developed from the fact that Moses, the a person who, chose, who got chose to um, receive law, divine law from God, and who talked to God face to face. Can you imagine a human being, human mortal life, talking face to face with God? So that instantly imparted prestige, perception, on Moses because he was talking to God. So he, his vision, his eyes, his intelligence connected with vision, visibility of God. And that was passed on from generation to generation. So in the spirit of Israel, this desire to define prestige as something valuable, something that needs to be um, nourished and nurtured is part of um, the way of life. 
and I think it's wonderful and it's awesome. So when we look at the connection between God and Moses, Moses instantly understands the prestige of God. Can you imagine if he was like one of the trolls today on internet and he would start mocking and talk, uh, taunting God and just behaving like an idiot? Um, he wouldn't even be able to um, look at God because that perception of critical attitude would make it impossible for him to connect to a perfection of God's presence. So we need to look at this situation as a need for educational improvement to teach people how to perceive prestige from what we inherit, how to differentiate between what is prestigious and what is um, really not very valuable. Uh, to teach people how to look at art in this way, at music, at each other. Uh, we are all God's works of art. We are all in the image of God. There's something good, something awesome in all of us. And when we start looking into this in a very praising, beautiful way, this is what will show up. When people start critically um, destroying other people, then like, a, like an abused dog, that human being just withers and is unable to show the light. There are some um, uh, uh, great um, prestige situations in sports. Uh, the, uh, the definition here says that uh, somebody can experience tremendous increase in prestige following uh, some victories. We know it in many sports teams like Celtics, we know it from um, Patriots, uh, and many other teams, we know amazing prestige that was created in Red Sox. So in sports, that um, acceptance and respect and admiration for victory and prestige that it creates lives. And this is really wonderful because it is a place where you cannot fake it. You either can be a great player or you can't be. You cannot just um, complain and criticize other good players to show yourself as a good player because if you go out there on the basket, uh, on, in the basket uh, game situation and you play like a um, like a weirdo nobody will admire you but if you play like a master when your skill is showcased and the efforts of hard work and practice shown in game people love that so in sports we have that um, opportunity to connect to the prestige, something valuable, something that enriches all of us, both the players and the participants in the audience, that it is very important to nurture and nourish it because it brings in great results. Um, in the great schools I've had opportunities to uh, get education from the prestige was a certain power and authority in my mind that allowed me to see knowledge and education as of divine origin because it connects with the prestige of God's knowledge that is eternal, but we have to learn it. We have to acquire it in each generation, each individual life. And the existence of that prestige was also good for other schools because then they were uh, grounded in ways to 
uh, raise the levels to high um, um, dimensions and not to decline and wither in situations when nothing is prestigious. So prestige as an added value is good for everybody because it creates standards of achievement that wake up within us a sense of admiration and that sense of admiration can be just as a receiver or as somebody who promotes um, that particular skill or talent um, and may showcase it or encourage others to do it. So it is very important for us to start promoting it on social media. Um, the synonyms in this particular definition is about status, standing, stature, reputation, repute, regard, fame, note, renown, honor, esteem, celebrity, importance, prominence, influence, eminence, and um, there are even more um, clout. Uh, the the um, another the, uh, definition from Merriam-Webster dictionary is the respect and admiration that someone or something gets for being successful or important. Um, I had a situation that is requiring a lot of healing in my heart around prestige because I was born with royal crown. You know, some people from royal heritage countries inherit it, uh, even if the royalty is not recognized. And when I was a little girl, I had to defend myself because some kids were attacking me uh, for this. They wanted to punish me, you know, because the the attitude at that time was that being a king or a queen is bad. That's something to be punished. Thank God I very quickly connected with English language and with Great Britain and I've been getting that shield from Great Britain on my heart and that um, knowledge that being born with light of royal life and beauty is good. There's, there's nothing bad about it. That is something that actually should be developed as prestige, as something um, godly, something that um, should be respected and admired. So, in thinking about the word prestige, I've always tried to heal that wound, wound within my heart. It was very easy for me to do it when I was taking courses at MIT, because MIT is connected with Harvard University, and Harvard University was created as a royal school. So I felt that my mind was receiving a lot of healing from that heritage. It's an ancient heritage, but it lives in the uh, spirit of the school. And, and then I realized that we have to rethink our attitude to achievements of royal authority and even to create knowledge about what it is. The revolutions didn't get rid of it. They only killed some people who were then current kings and queens, and then they put shadows on the heritage. But the heritage is always there um, because it's Christian and Jewish heritage, and the way it manifests will be unhealthy, but if it is understood and properly healed, it is a well of life for the whole nation and for the world. So as I'm developing knowledge about this 
nature of my own personal life from God himself, who created me through my parents, uh, I've been receiving a lot of healing and a lot of strength in my heart and my blood. And I believe that I may be able to connect that light to dress the whole nation in light and that will heal us from the nakedness that is rampant uh, not only in America but in European countries and many other places that repressed royal light the nakedness came in and people started exposing themselves and their um, uh, there were there were there's just like no place to hide because there is no way for this nakedness to be covered because it can only be covered by royal light the real one the true one so i think that as we are entering this beautiful year 2019 um, we should give god a chance to teach us how to be dressed in that beautiful royal light from kingdom of God and how to restore respect and admiration not only of the heritage that we are entitled to but also how to restore prestige within ourselves to ourselves because that also would create strength that would not uh, make it so easy to attack someone else's achievements because the sense of prestige and admiration within an individual would be so strong that would not allow to destroy or ban another person for um, reasons that are um, not noble. So I think that today when the nation of the United States of America is dealing with tragedy of government shutdown, partial government shutdown, but the problems are much deeper than just uh, this particular partial shutdown. I ask God to dress American government in his royal light from kingdom of God. That all employees of the American government will be dressed in that light and there will be no more nakedness and that that light connected with divine intelligence will show the right way of running offices the right way of connecting government to life creating government a strength for life eliminating anything that would be destructive to life um, and creating prestige within our offices of American government that would be connected to respect and admiration and that we will create government that is building us up and strengthening us up not destroying us or criticizing us or using um, strange wills to push for laws that often destroy lives so as tragic as the shutdown is, it is an opportunity also to try something new. And I recommend that you receive that divine royal light from God as I received it. And this has been literally restoring my health. And I believe that when we have American government run by the light of divine will, 
employees of the government and people in the nation will not get so sick anymore because there's a certain health connected with a presence of divine light and life and love and that creates stability in the nature of life in the nature that God created us because his rules strengthen the beauty of our natures somebody else's rules or some strange God's rules may interfere in this and destroy and we know how dangerous human sacrifice was in certain religions of the past and God of Israel eliminated it and he became present with his, through his son Jesus Christ of Nazareth as the only sacrifice. So he eliminated that need for people to be subject to authority of death. Divine authority, royal authority from kingdom of God is authority of life. And authority of life and wisdom and light that informs our decisions and divine light that dresses up and dresses us in ways that we don't have to be so naked then we can create stability and beauty in the American government that would last for generations and that's my vision and that's my blessing may God bless us